I mean, fine. Well, I guess, yeah. Sure. Bubbles? Well, look, I like what I'm seeing. Yeah, I mean, look at that. Look at that. That's great screen right there. Great yeah. shot. Look at those fonts. Look at that foam. Every aspect of it is so rich. Right. The fizz. The fuzz. Here. Now, do you think, I mean, eventually, are we going to get to the point where we have an episode that's whole purpose is just to make the beer that comes up in the intro? <laughs> I feel like we need to. Is that the angle? All yeah. right. Now, uh, Precious Channel, sometimes known as the Amber Council, mm. uh, we greet you uh, in the traditional uh, way of our people. Uh, oh. Thank you so much uh, for rolling through however it came to be. Mm -hmm. um, you have fallen ass backwards um, into Twitch's brewing show, Acquisitions Intoxicated. Oh. Uh, its purpose, you may ask? Thanks. I'm asking, what, what the hell are we doing? Here? Why are we doing this? And why do we keep doing it? Why do we yeah, persist? Um, no, uh, it is to give you that which you already own. It's the art mm. and science of brewing. Uh, I am joined as almost always mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. by the notorious one, uh, the notorious EJB, uh, Eric J. Benson, uh, uh, Azerbaijan. Yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh, yeah. Dr. Benson. Yeah. Um, now, uh, it has been, uh, it has been low these many weeks uh, since Icewind Ale was, uh, the, the alchemical process mm -hmm. was essentially a big gun on it. But yes. And, and now at long last, uh, the fruits of our collective labors, um, we'll, we'll have an opportunity to sample them, no, which I'm quite pleased with. Now, I'm I sorry. have this, I would describe it as incredibly cute. I'll hold it it's near so, to It's myself. so adorable. It's Look very it. cute. Um, it's so cute. Yeah, exactly. And I think, mm -hmm. uh, but you you just have like a, like a human tap. I got a straight right? tap, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of great. good. Yeah, I think yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the. We'll use. We'll expose the human room briefly. Yeah, nobody needs to see my bedroom. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> well, are you are you trying to communicate to us, Mr. Benson, that Ra that Castle Ravenloft is superior? Yeah, just a just a wee bit. <laughs> to, to your I mean, I'm room. Just gonna, I'm gonna throw it out there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at this! Graham Baxter is in there. Of course, Major Death Shoe Bear. Tobias, thank you so much for uh, for sticking around. Obviously, we appreciate it. We're talking about 25 months, nine mm. months, 22 months, 32 months, crazy pants. Now, uh, but I saw that Graham Baxter had uh, emphasized a piece of text, and I think it's very, very interesting, too. Um, I'm very pleased to say that One for the Road, created right here on this channel with you mm -hmm. very fine people, paired perfectly with the infamous fruitcake it was designed to. Uh, I'm going to brew a batch annually for the purpose. That's Changing great. lives. Which Changing is really, lives. which is really funny because like last week I was talking about fruitcake with someone and I mentioned Graham Baxter and I'm like, oh, I've had, I finally had real good fruitcake and it was yeah. Graham who sent it and I was like, this is fantastic. No, and it was I, incredibly. I, 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 could, who I could finally it. make yeah, the like, point of fantastic. no fruitcake is great. <laughs> well, no, we know, yeah. we have we have experienced what has to be considered the optimal configuration. Yeah, absolutely. And this is and this is a, a dish. I mean, demonized, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And not least of which by, you know, ourselves before we were educated properly. Properly, yeah. Right? That's, there's the, there's the, the word. Yeah. That's the system. Yeah. Um, but uh, yes, uh, we have got, we've got lots to do uh, on today's show. Obviously, mm -hmm. we're going to be creating uh, an incredible product. Um, but we are also going to be getting a glass of this stuff. So do you want to, uh, do you want to, uh, well, I, we, well it's, it's all the things, right? Wishful drinking has to begin first. There's yeah. a, we need to be thinking about our Joseph Campbell. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, the really. Arc, right? Just let's, let's start on the top quarter of the arc. Let's crest it mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. talk about wishful drinking, which yeah. was a British golden ale that we made. Um, it starts off with mostly composed of Maris Otter, which is going to give us that great biscuity, um, more bready flavor to the beer. And we put in some Victory and Caramel, which is just going to emphasize that. But what was really fun on for the hops, 
we came in with some saws, which is going to be um, classic, 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 earthy um, and spicy. But we put for aroma mosaic and holler to blanc, which is going to be these fruity, you know, stone fruits, ap apricots, um, all different um, types of fruit flavors that are going to be on the nose of this beer. Um, and because we drink um, almost 100 percent of the time that we do this show, I'm going to need a reminder about the theme. <laughs> I need a reminder too, because um, I can't, I, I was going to ask you. So Indeed. Well, I'm, here, glad we're, I'm glad we're both here together. No, it, it's, it's, space. it doesn't, it doesn't speak well of us. Yeah. I mean, let's be clear. Um, but uh, speaking of, of otters, uh, arthritic otter has uh, resubbed for 36. And of course, Damn, amazing. It. Yeah. Um, so but, we will we will get to that that rich oh that's right wishful drinking it's it's the it's the red larch festival where oh Jesus it's yeah. in it's, Christmas it's like we where, created that whole place well, I mean that's why it's because it's like from whole fucking cloth um, but now obviously I can see them uh, I can see them sort of like shuffling yeah. through the streets. You know, to these right. parties where inside everybody but, but just carrying, pretends like mug from from party to party. Oh, for right? sure. You know, and you have it's gonna it's all it's gonna tap, have that right? vibe. It's gonna yeah. have that um the best kind of SCA. Yeah, uh, yeah. Vibe. It's, more, it's more like caroling of the bells, but you're just caroling of the beers. Yeah, it works. Beers, it works. Right? This is <laughs> this this is a real song in my mind. Yeah, I, I already. Think, I, I, new theme um, song. Exactly. Now, let's. Uh, so, so wishful drinking is what we're going to put in there. So obviously a great build. You're going to stuff this into the device. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah. Let's see if I can do it right this time. Last no, you, you good. have it. It's, it's, listen, you, you have yet to fail in the spectacular ways mm. that I have, like where, where plastic shavings are aggressively added to the recipe. Yeah. But that's just flavor. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, exactly. It, it accrues yeah, well, a, a unique taste. Yeah. So let's let's get this uh, cracking. Yeah, let's jump on it. Hub. I gotta try to find the Logitech G Hub. Uh, there we go. Thank God. It, it, something really unique was happening to my skin <laughs> in this um, on this camera. But so let's take a look at the device. Obviously, you can see. It's ready to go. There's going to be the classic twist, the knob twist that I know you came here for. Like, that's the whole reason you're here. Oh, geez. This is already a, well, you can tell right there, a good index that you've got a crazy, oh, dear God. Dear sweet Jesus. Okay, hey, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. So it was, yeah, I mean, it's a three out of five. I mean, in in total, in aggregate, three out of five. Um, no, it's fine. It's fine. But you can just sort of see just from how varied the how varied the malts are inside there um, that we have a few uh, that there's a few things poking in there. Now, uh, nothing too nothing that's jumping out too crazy on the SRM. So it makes it a little bit hard, but anytime you start to see that, that pattern there, you know, you have a few in there. Oh boy. Oh boy. I did jinx it Tobias. That's true. Yeah, exactly. The, the, it's at the end. It's like, is there some, some complexity maybe at the middle point? Yeah. But at the end, do you land flat? And then that, and then the arms are like in a celebratory sort of Y type configuration. Then you did what you came to do. Uh, no, uh, sauce fire. No, you can't. You can't drink it yet. Right now, it's just some grains. It's very dry. You could eat it. I mean, that's certainly that's available to you. Uh, Cooking Mom wants to know: Is uh, is there any reason I would need more than the basic beer smith software if I'm looking to start messing with beer crafting? Frankly, you don't even need beer smith software to begin beer crafting. Those recipes are all over the place. Oh my God. Well, so and this is what we noticed um, yesterday because he obviously Eric had to stop by and drop some off for me in this adorable creature right here, um, this Wessel. But we were 
we were just making a note and obviously the suggestion came from the uh, channel uh, as many of the best suggestions often Look. do. Yeah. yeah. It, it doesn't even want to render like that's how t that's how thick it is up top. Right. But that's that's your it was it's flaked barley and what else was in there? Uh, let's go back to it. Uh, uh, Squire X2 wants yeah. to know what type of beer we brew. Uh, real quick, can we just go over to the My Recipes tab and? <laughs> yeah, we can do that. I mean, no, actually, we can't do it quickly because look at this nonsense. Yeah, it's not possible to do. So, Squire, we have been at it for a couple of years now on here, uh, making different beers from D and D campaigns, um, fantasy based, uh, the occasional. Uh, the occasional leap into other contexts, but uh, this yeah. is this is a long running show. You can see uh, in the video history of the channel itself is a few episodes, but the best way to go back through it is probably to go to the Penny Arcade TV YouTube, mm -hmm. um, where there is a profound uh, archive of years and years of stuff. But in terms of style, uh, uh, Eric and I are very enthusiastic about IPAs and because that's the case we rarely make them on the show we try to experiment right. with um all kinds of styles although I would say that we specialize in um we specialize in in takes on German beers right now oh uh West Bravo just found Les Caliber daughter and I are loving it well you'll be pleased oh, to know fantastic. that you'll be pleased to know that uh I finished the second volume about a month ago and Mike has already begun to draw so, all right. So, Ice Wind Ale. Let's take a look at this. So, we're trying mm -hmm. to we're trying to come at a. So it's it's, it's mostly Munich malt with mm -hmm. some Mary Otter. So bready, biscuity. Yes, bread is have, big. Then we had a little bit of, of um, special roast to give it some more toasty flavors. Yeah, and and a little bit of color. Right, but here's the real crux. We put maple syrup in the boil. Yeah. Right. Maple syrup in the boil. Went with the with, with the fuggles um, uh, for the hops, but Classic. then we dry hopped with vanilla, uh, with vanilla bean and cinnamon. Yeah. Well, and you can tell. Oh, it's, it smells delicious. Like the vanilla bean, cinnamon, and then um, it's basically spice bread, right? It is like um, it's like a it's like a good gingerbread cookie. This is freaking amazing off tap. Gosh, yeah, that's the fantasy, right? I mean, of course, I mean, this has been in the growler and it's still trying to, it's still trying to build something up, up top. Yeah. Like that's just a testament to the recipe, right? Oh my God, this is amazing. Um, just the carbonation smooths it out. The, the cinnamon, there's just enough cinnamon on this. Uh, it tastes like you're drinking a gingerbread cookie. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, man. I want to bring over the full keg to your house because this is so good on tap. This is amazing. <sighs> oh, no, Brianish, I got it right here, kid. Oh, man. It hits you with this. So basically, it when it comes at you, it has something at every, like on every uh, layer. This beer, it has something for that palate. Yeah, right? I'm drinking a goddamn cookie, and it's amazing. Yeah, no, and it's a great. It is actually a good cookie. Yeah, it, drinking a cookie by itself would be quite a feat. It, it, yeah. <laughs> Right. But this I mean, is actually like what we were trying to do. And obviously the, the hook is, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest. I, it's entirely possible that I embarrassed myself perhaps going into the lore on this one too much uh, when I was writing the strip today with Mike, <laughs> but I can't fucking, the hook is great where each of these 10 towns, it's basically like, um, it's like uh, municipal management. Right. Right. Um, but basically, it's these 10 towns, they need this, but none of them individually have what they need to put together a full recipe. So it's right. essentially, it's a beer by committee, but it's, a, but it's a committee that actually gets beer. Right. 
And but but then they all have to vote and they all have to put their thing in. And it's like, we got this maple syrup. We got to make sure this gets in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but as a taste, it is really, really welcoming. I, I gave um, I gave some to Brenna yesterday. And she was um, just like, this is horrible. What are you? Well, doing? no. And she's like, never again. Disgusting. <laughs> no. Um, just garbage. Just no. throw it out. Put it put it in the trash next to the decaf coffee. <laughs> no, but but the the main thing is a cookie mom. Obviously, you know we learn from the best. But the the main takeaway is that it it struck unerringly. She is not. I mean, she'll she'll she likes very very classic mm -hmm. beers. Like her profile is basically like as a, is a pilsner. Yeah. It's like does it taste like a pilsner? Then it's beer and we're good. Yeah. Right. Um. And that's fine. That's frankly that's the way most people are. If you look at what beer gets bought. But she enunciated all the things that we were trying to do. And she's not like coming at this from some fancy pants level. Right. She's just reacting to it like a person would. Right. Like here's, here's something in front of you. Do you like it? No. And the cookie vibe just went straight. It, it, it was delivered to the target market mm. unerringly. A um, couple uh, good notes in this. z -Rex, Yeah. What's the... Um, ideal beer for a float i think that'd be interesting to try this as a float it would be perfect uh, i i really think that'd be cool well i mean do you want um, me here do you want me to go see if i have if some you, vanilla ice cream if, yeah i mean that'd yeah, be amazing because we, we should be this these are the things we should be do, like striving for um pyro actually the, the reason um uh, i uh jared got the mini growlers um, is because the big growlers that we got, the uh, 64 ounce growlers, uh, we didn't get the caps. So we have to wait for them to resend the caps. So I couldn't bring the, the big growlers of it over. And Boozo. Um, you know, so this is interesting, juxtaposed. Um, I don't, I think this could be a Mike beer. It's not in his normal line of i think what he likes but it's on the edge of being a cookie in a glass so there's that going for it um so i don't know this this is this is a 50 50 split um of would mike like it or not i'd like i i, I the the thing is i'd actually like to see if he if he would like this unfortunately covid's a, a pain in the ass right now um but I feel, I mean, literally you're drinking a gingerbread cookie and it tastes amazing. And I want to make this recipe again. Like this is, this is actually one of um, the recipes I really want to try over and over again. Um, yeah, especially during the winter months, right? Yeah, because same. it's hearty and, you know, I'll, I'll drink cookies as, long, as much as I can. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, Stiggs wanted to know if that's an Acquisitions Incorporated guitar in the background. It is. It's a cigar box guitar. That's right. Uh, which is sort of a thing. Yeah, sorry about the, the mega barks. I think someone is, uh, they're cleaning the roof. Mm. Um, and so uh, Bennett, I mean, this is not, this is not a dangerous hound. No. Like this hound, I mean, I'll, I'll give you the full experience. Yeah. Like, you know, the, I don't. The hound literally, the door opens and he jumps up onto my shoulders. Like, I don't understand the physics of it, but that's what happens. Yeah, exactly. Oh, uh, it, but when I was talking to Mike earlier today, um, uh, he was saying that he's like, well, hey, if Eric is ever out at Micro Homebrew mm -hmm. and he wants to drop off something for, oh, me, to, shit, I for me to guess, that. for me to guess on the show, because he sort of lives out in the neck of the woods. Yeah, I would totally. Um, but like, he was like, hey, beer. if you want to drop something off, yeah, I mean, this might actually work. Yeah. Um, but. Well, this is like a 50-50. This is what I was just talking about. Like, this yeah. tastes like a gingerbread cookie. That looks amazing. Well, let's uh, let's take a look, shall we? <laughs> no, my children were scandalized as shit. <laughs> it's like, already I'm drinking beer in the middle of the day. And then and now like, you're putting ice cream in it? <laughs> Dad, what are you... It's like I got the ice cream out, so already they're pissed because yeah. you know they're not having ice cream for lunch. Right? And then I put it in beer, and it's just it's like I'm undertaking some satanic ritual, <laughs> like in public. 
All right, let's see how it goes. Jesus. Pretty good, right? It's good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's real good. Yeah, I so that so my my uh, thinking on this is this is either this is a right down the middle 50-50 split. Mike would like this beer or not. Yes, yes. And it's the the bitterness, the actual bitterness from the cinnamon is the only thing that I think might because it would be the hot bitterness because it's right. the fuggles are actually pretty gentle here. Right. But this is I mean it tastes like a, you're drinking a cookie. So I I think that I think that um fresh like like with the full carbonation yeah i think it's a win mm. the yeah. ice cream i think the that's quite good i think that's yeah. quite good but the thing is the the nose on it that's that is one of the best the nose actually mm. sells the cookie fantasy first right uh, it, it, pre it preps everything else it doesn't preps, actually preps your taste buds. i don't know if it's the maple like the remainder of the maple after fermentation or something like that mm -hmm. but it, but really it doesn't actually smell like beer to me mm -mm. it actually smells it smells like um like dough baking almost. yeah like baking right yeah i am 100 percent behind this beer and it's if I was good. if I was in Icewind Dale, I would want to be drinking this beer. Well, and you would be because yeah. it's all canon. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Bam. Yeah, you let me make that one book, mm -hmm. uh, and now I'm just bringing every all my fiction in through the back door. Uh, Pyro, has there been any further thought to that recipe book? Well, this is, I mean, this would be the year to do it. Yeah. Right. I mean, no no shows here basically for the first half that are planned and then you know it's we'll we'll keep an eye out for you know if it's safe to do if we think it's okay to do then we'll have shows later but it's possible that we've got a little bit of time here to experiment on the on the print side of things yeah i mean i would tap tristan to do it mm -hmm. um but you know she stays pretty busy over there with her actual job at wizards right but hell yeah that would have been that would have been the easiest call on earth because mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're basically like, they're a triple threat. I mean, they could handle the cool layout stuff. Mm -hmm. They could handle the, they could handle any additional art. Yep. And then in addition to that, uh, they would just be able to, they would just nail the whole vibe. Right. Totally. Well, yeah. Jux, it, it wouldn't be difficult. Um, all right. Well, yeah. So this is, this is a, this is a Christmas miracle basically. Yeah. Do we have to do anything else? Can we just keep drinking this? Like, but who's gonna say no yeah um yeah i mean it's it's good all the way it is good all the way down to the end of the glass <clears throat> um uh, and because it has those some of those novel ingredients um it's sort of a different experience too as you go down yeah and, totally. and i don't mean ice cream as the novel ingredient right, i'm just right. saying um and then in terms of abv that was mm -hmm. uh what nine yeah Okay. Uh, was it yet? Yeah. Oh, okay. Shit. Uh, see, I was gonna say because you told me yesterday it was like six and a half. Or something I thought like it that. was six and a half. I was like, "That's really bad news, Eric." That's really bad news. Yeah, but this is this this doesn't drink like a nine. We are There's brewers. No medicinal, like flavor. There is no ABV. Um, you cannot perceive the alcohol in this at all, except. I just had one glass and now I feel like I want to fight. Like, well, just don't fight the dog. No, no, no. This dog is going to keep yeah. me safe. Uh, no, no, but, but, but that's it, dude. Yeah. Uh, okay. I, was, I am so glad to see that 9%. Holy shit. So between the vanilla and the cinnamon, I think that, I think specifically, I think that the cinnamon spice hides the cinnamon oh, that's spice a, that's a cool yeah that's a good idea i think yeah. that that actually hides the abv in like in the mix mm -hmm. um because it does not cut that is a motherfucker dude yeah that's an uppercut <laughs> right jesus christ i uh, 
I'm so pleased with this beer. Well, yeah, this this is um, this is something else. It's like you know, we we obviously we make a lot of good stuff in concert with the council for sure, but every now and then we definitely have one, and it's like okay, well that that would win a festival, right? Yeah, hundred like percent. You, you, Jack, thank you so much. We put it in there, and uh, and then we just step away. We just step away. Yeah. And then it's just like, just send us the trophy, because <laughs> we have there's so much like just, we don't so much have going. Here. There's so much going on today. Here is the address. Just yep. ship it, and you don't gotta pay for the fancy shipping. Like I don't no, need it overnight. No, I, yeah. But definitely maybe, send maybe, it to maybe, this place. Maybe two to three day. You know. It's yeah. More yeah. Brianish. Uh, thank you so much. Four yeah, I mean months. it's true, but Brad, it's true. If if we that's I think that that has to be the next step. Well, the, the two yeah. next steps I think are well, one start again. <laughs> yes, one. true, true. Um, but between the fest and the book, I feel mm -hmm. like that has to sort of be the next. Yeah, I think it'd be fun. That has to be the next steps for it too, just because uh, they they have to get they have to get put out to a, a broader. Yeah. Um, now, I think broader market. fun would be going through all the recipes with the chat and saying, hey, which ones do we want to consider? Well, yeah, because right? ultimately, you know, if, if one of those was able to, to bite or get or get put somewhere, mm -hmm. right, then, I mean, that's the opportunity for, you know, for them to come and get some of it. Yeah. Um, it's true. I mean, we, we had a really good time working with uh, two beers. Oh and hope, God, yeah, and, and hopefully, and hopefully, we'll have a chance to work with two beers again in the future. Yeah. But we had a really good time working with them um, on a signing bonus, and signing bonus did not last. I mean, it's like, no, you wait, 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 no. Whenever you work with, whenever you work with somebody, it's like you hope that they will feel like they made a good choice, right? right. Um, and so, in my mind, I was always like. Yeah, I mean, it, it's there's probably a pallet somewhere hanging around. Right. No, no, I guess I, I, it was annihilated. Yeah, the day it came out. You know what I mean? Um, all right, so let's get this. I let's get do. this. Oh, God, what a so, winner. But that explains it. 9%, thank Christ. Okay, what a relief. Because <laughs> I was like, eh, I don't know. I've had beer before. Uh, but it's like the experience of drinking it. Yeah. And then like the biochemical process that's happening in my body, it, they were not lined up. <laughs> <laughs> they were not lined up. Scary, crazy, good to see you. Mm. Um, but yes, I, I think it's definitely worth, especially right now under underneath these, you know, in these circumstances that we find ourselves in. Mm -hmm. It Absolutely. might be, it might be that a book that combines lore, art, recipes, um, for multi for multi gallon systems and you and mechanics and, and, well and mechanics uh, and mechanics so that the, they can be consumed as uh, potions essentially in game right so yeah. get it get it in the um, get it in the supplement continuum yeah right agree okay uh, oh, this scary crazy you are about to fall into an open manhole cover. Um, into a, a realm of terrifying information. Mr. Venson, Acquisitions Intoxicated Brewmaster. The question from Scary Crazy Butterknife is, hey, is there a liquor derived from beer? Yes, all liquor. All. All liquor. <laughs> so, all liquor is made from wort. You, yeah, so you make wort, which they is have the, the same process. Yeah, which is the process of extracting sugar from grains. And that is the same for both beer and liquor. It's just what you do afterwards um, that either turns it into a liquor or turns it into beer. So technically, yeah, all liquor is beer first, well, mo the majority. Exactly. You hit it. And, and, and that's why this old man on my block is always trying to come at us because he knows that we're brewers and he has the equipment to transform beer into hard liquor. Mm -hmm. Um you know, and the truth is, is that, you know, he's, he's like finding cheap wines. Yeah. And he's transforming cheap wine into brandy. Yeah. Well, that's, 
it's the same process. It's just has, it's just a different mother. Yeah, essentially, well, right. And like one of my friends uh, owns a distillery, which was um, right next to a brewery. So when the brewery had a bad batch, they would just take the bad batch of beer and turn it into liquor. Right. So that's that is so, a that is an ancient yeah, time an, tested. Yeah, that's how it works, right? That's how it works. And there's and there's going to be materials that maybe don't succeed on one or the other of these axes. Yep. And, and and you can you can transform it the other way. In fact, it was much earlier in the process for the show, but we put together a beer whose purpose was to oh, it's okay, Bennett. Um we put together a beer whose purpose was to be distilled. Yeah, now, it, but it was designed to work both ways, but it was mm -hmm. black. It was a really, really dark one. I'm trying to remember what the, um, I'm trying to remember what the, the vibe was. Was it the cold comfort? God, I, you know, I think it might've been. Maybe. Um, I, I think it was, it was like I'm dark. Sure. It was like darkness that you could drink, well, right? Cold comfort was a tropical stout. Oh yeah, but the idea was that we were. I, th I think the idea was that we were going to pull it out. I, I could be wrong. Like I say, no, there's I mean, hundreds. You, you, I mean, there's, there's so, so many recipes. recipes. Just trying to remember what the hell we were doing. <laughs> there's hundreds of recipes in here, but one of these was meant to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly right. Sticks, the cold comfort was basically what they drank. Is their food like for the for the miners that had been trapped? And there's a lot of rituals in, um, in Red Larch that refer to this, like Last Stone's Day is connected to all this, but cold comfort was essentially they had found a way to sustain themselves oh, with, sure, sure, sure. with darkness yep. in the in the cave, right? Here, let, let, let me let out this beast, hang on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, be, I forgot that it was the beer for the trapped uh, miners. That's, re oh, man, that we've been doing this a while. Uh, yeah, meat is honey wine, wine effectively. Yeah. Brandies can be made out of a lot of different um, fruits. Um, I, I had a friend who owned a distillery made an apple brandy that was just utterly fantastic. Um, there's, a, there's, I mean, you can get creative with it. You can distill from a lot of <laughs> almost anything. Um, God, I would love to partner with uh, Zymergy. Um, that magazine is great. If if you're interested in brewing, I'd say pick up an issue. Um, you're always learning about a lot of cool stuff. There's a lot of great articles. Um, you'll learn about when they were happening, when festivals and uh, would be going on, um, but. Yeah, if, if, if you are interested in brewing, Zymergy is a great, great magazine to grab. For sure, for sure. All right, well, hey, speaking of which, uh, where are we going to take this ride today? Oh, well, well we already know. This has already been, this has already been done. Oh, marvelous. Last, last week, we said, since it's the new year, we're going to do Old Lang Syne. Um, Old Lang Syne. Old Lang Syne. For, for Talp? For Talp. Can do. Yeah can do we've had a winter beer let's do a semi-tropical boat dad from team naiad i like that a gun <laughs> lager. like um uh, like a because we could put like black pepper in in the lager which would be really oh the gunpowder cool. yeah nice like a you spicy could. lager i think that'd be great oh but we could we could like the fiction on that would be such a delight yeah totally all right, here is my document. I am ready to catalog these atrocities. All right. So what do we think an old Langstein beer would be? This well, is let's, this. Let's put it out, right? Um, in uh, profiles. So is it light? Is it dark? Um, yeah, what's it about, right? What's it about? Is it a strong ale? Is it so? Old Lang Syne is always this unification, right? No matter what has happened throughout the year, at the end of the year, we're singing this song for it to be a better year. Right? Exactly. Um, you, any 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 troubles you had go away. You know, what what? How does that resemble? 
Yeah. 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 Is it, is it designed to, is it like uh, reformatting? Is it like defragging the mind? Yeah. Right. So is it, is it hardcore stuff? Um, is it, or is it, is it meant to, you know, accompany these like some long form deliberations about the year? Right. Right. I mean, I'm going to 100% go with one choice. Yeah. 9% I don't think of as an optimistic beer. <laughs> so we're essentially talking about optimism in beer form, right? I, either a Scottish light or a Scottish heavy. Listen, well, for with, a boy. Rob, with Robert Burns writing this tune, mm -hmm. I think we got to do one or the other. So tell me, but, tell me about these. Tell me about these styles. I mean, they're both very uh, caramely, right? Um, yeah, that tracks. Scot Scottish heavy. It's thicker, richer. Um, you get a little bit of butterscotch notes in there. Um, they're basically, I mean, Scottish light is just going to be a lighter one. So I say we do one or the other. Yeah. Um, so heavier, but, it's going to be, it's going to have higher ABV, but not high ABV. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh yeah. No, it doesn't go above six. Yeah. Okay. So that's, so that's, that's a good beer that's got some heft, but it's not, um, you're not going to crucify yourself on it. Uh -huh. And then the lighter one is just a little bit more potable version of that. And either one is going to sell the vibe. Mm. Yeah, I mean, we could just do a Scotch ale. Yeah, as well. What are the what are the notes there? I mean, typically Scotch. I, I feel like there's a lot of caramel in Scotch ales typically too. Absolutely. I mean, it's just a, a lighter version. Oh, oh, basically, we're giving them the sort of three tier. Mm -hmm. ah, so even the Scottish light is heavier than the than the ale. Yeah, I love it. Well, hey, so this this will give us our first steps out into this realm. Yeah, for sure, Grimsworth. Yeah, optimism is mostly the, the, the tone of the song. I, I'm with you in in so far as, um, uh, all the people that I have met, uh, in in the Scottish continuum are very realistic people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> very focused, um, survival oriented people. Yeah. But I mean. This was a, uh, I mean, we, so uh, back in New York, I belonged to the St. Andrew's Society and it was for Scottish descendants and um, it would always get sung. I mean, you could hear it down the streets um, yeah. on, on New Year's. So the song. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's, and that's, you know, not for nothing, but uh you might need a custom tool to uh, soften the ending of this satanic uh, warlock shit yeah. uh, that we call 2020. Yeah, Pyrrhal, I was when I was in Scotland, I was reading a book on Scottish history and it got too sad and I just left it in the hotel room. Hmm. I was about a hundred pages in and I couldn't believe it. I just, I couldn't believe that these were real stories, frankly. Okay. So what are we looking at here? Uh, Scottish light. Perfect. So right in the middle we'll be able to uh, turn that into something great. Yeah, I guess that's true, Jux. <laughs> I mean, we, we should, we should, 
consider the possibility that 2020 just continues. <laughs> just on the rail of time, 2020 just is maintained. That dark energy. <laughs> December 32nd, 2020. Ugh. 2020 plus, oh, it's a new game plus. Nice. Uh, all right, good. So we're we're dialed in there. Where do we go next? We need okay. our stats? Yeah, let's get our stats. So give me a new recipe. Let's hey, rem remember how I said I didn't think this was 9%? Alcohol? Yeah. I retract that previous statement. Yeah. Oh, is it is is the Scottish light the meat no. meat machine? Oh okay. I was saying the ice one ale. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's serious. I can feel it on my skin. Yeah. That's that's how. And and mine was even diluted with your iced creams. Hey, I thought, listen, I'm not gonna be ashamed of that. That just sounds wonderful. You're you're not gonna guilt me into being mad about that. <laughs> um, All right, let's get it. So let's talk about ABV. Yeah. Uh, what's our range? So it's probably it's probably five, six, seven. How about two and a half to three and a half? Oh, really? Okay. So it's the the Scottish. Oh, it's it's even gentler. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! So you're supposed to go hog wild. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll start at three. So with this, I mean, we're thinking it's a, you know, a new year, right? Um, if this is the celebration night, we're drinking a lot. So the ABV might be a little higher. Yeah. Um, but if we're sipping to the new year, then it's going to be lower. Yeah. So let's say, let's do, let's do three and a half, four and a half and five and a half. But I, I would say, yeah, I, no, I would say three, four and five. Perfect. Can do. Yeah, I'm not even, I, I don't even know when I've, I think I had a 3% beer when I was in Scotland. Odd. <laughs> There's a lot of the, a lot of those real ales, the characteristic, like the primary characteristic of them is not that they're brutal. No, that's, that is more, I, th I think more of an American thing. I mean, we're well, very yeah. much. We're very, well, we're very much trying to be like, oh, hey, I'm drinking a nine percent well, beer. Well, I was, but that's I not was the point. I want to no. be able, I want to be able to have a sessionable beer, multiple beers with friends over a night of, at the pub. Indeed, you know? uh, Omidar, thanks for the sub. Yeah, so I think that that's a big part of it. Actually, is um, I was surprised to learn that because I mean, obviously, the recipe, the actual recipe for Guinness is different in every market it's sold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the version of Guinness that they have in Ireland is lower ABV mm -hmm. uh, than it is in many of the other places they export to. And man, let me tell you, does it taste better right from St. James Gate? <laughs> well, I suspect. Ooh. I mean, I'd never even had it before I went there. Wow. Okay. So three and four is really the knife fight here, huh? Yeah. I, I, and I can see it. I can see it. it. It might be that you're supposed to be there and go hard. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, well, no, I mean, if it's three, it just means that it's it's a long night at the bar. You're exactly. up until midnight, you're cheering, you know, I mean, it, it allows you to not be keeled over after two. Yeah, it's purpose. I mean, basically you gotta, you gotta essentially, what you're trying to do with that lower one is you're set, you're establishing your plans. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. Uh, but yeah, even at the four tier, I mean that's plenty. Yeah, that, that um, I mean you it's are not too crazy. You're crossing into a heavy territory, but that's fine. Absolutely, it's going to be a little bit north. Um, but I think that that's fine. I think that, I think that we can find success there for sure. You're all right, Boozo. Uh, up until midnight is a is a is a light night at the bar. <laughs> True. True. I didn't realize uh, until I moved out here that bars close at two instead of four. <laughs> they close at four? Four a.m. in New York. Yeah. Honestly, you know what? 
And I have seen that. It's just so strange. I've only been there like three times. Yeah, I mean, nothing good happens after midnight, but still. Yeah, well, Brent and I were out there for some kind of, it was some kind of event, it was some kind of a Time magazine mm-hmm. thing. And so we were dressed to the nines because we never go there. Yeah. But then you're out on the, you're out walking the streets at three, four in the morning after a party. Oh yeah. It's the best. Um, and then you find that diner. Like or we had the, dive. We, we yeah, would find exactly. dives. But we had, uh, we would find sp- diner dives. So you yeah. get beer and food. You get the combo. Yeah. Just maintain. Yeah. Bacon is best. I'm right there with you. Uh, uh, there were nights we didn't get to the bar till after midnight. Agreed. Yep, that happens too. Hey, I had heard that Beth's closed. Shut up. What? Oh, okay. No, because I, I went to... Hold I went, on. No, I went online and I was like, oh, Beth's. And it's like, oh, hey. they. I was like, oh, they're still around. Um, the delivery and takeout business are not adequately suited to both our product and our clientele, which is true. Um, we appreciate your support and fingers crossed. We'll be back sooner than later. Oh that hurts. man. That hurts. Well, that, yeah, that I mean, I, th- I think that, I think that, you know, it's like sometimes they were busy, but a lot of times they were like at half capacity yeah. basically forever. Right. Synaptic. Good to see you. Um, that's a that's a deep cut. Beth's is my. I know, dude. I know. I have been with you at Beth's. Yeah. I, I have seen. Uh, the stupid seen... amounts of hash browns. That... Well, yeah, and they'll and they'll bring you more. Yeah. Um, all right. So four percent. We got a good thing going here. Okay, that's great. Cool. So let's talk about our color with the uh, the SRM chart. Let me mm-hmm. pull it up for everyone. I'm pretty sure I got it up. There we go. marvelous uh i can't see it yet but i know that it's coming because we see oh, it. it's it's coming i'm oh jesus i'm doing something oh vegas yeah i mean i don't want to be a dick hole uh that was another era for sure okay so <laughs> wait what do you say uh well <laughs> Now I have to do it. I guess. Uh, Vegas Lull says um, some type of time, some type of Time magazine thing. Is uh, is that how Jerry describes the Time PA was in the Time One Hundred? Yes. Oh, that's cool. That's correct. Yeah, it's awesome. All right. So, um, SRM between normally between seventeen and twenty-two, which is oh. this really cool. It's a Chris, rich, gold and rich yeah, color. Uh, it's a color. nice, rich space there in the middle, huh? Yeah. And if we're going more light and festive, I think we're down on the 17 scale. If we're going more hearty and clanking glasses, I think that's around yeah. where we get to the 22. Well, here, let's go 16, 19, 22. I like that. Yeah. Synaptic, we're doing um, Taup. Last week mentioned we should do a New Year's beer called Old Lang Stein. Um, uh, Brianish, Beffs. Holy crap, I'm so glad you know what Beffs is. Um, it's an Irish joint in Albany. Oh, yeah. Oh, That's, that, is that so? Utterly delicious. Um, they have a couple of spots. They, they've grown over the years, and man... They make these Irish nachos that are just fucking to die for. Irish nachos. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're potato chips covered in cheese and bacon. Potato and, chips! And, and Reuben, uh, or, or uh, corned beef. and Corned uh, beef? Yeah, it, it's it's out of control. This is... I don't, I don't even know how to feel about this. You, you should feel like you need to go... Hungry, to I guess. To try and get some of this. It's amazing. Orion Rogue, are you a member of that august body? The redhead? Whoa! I am surrounded by them at my house. Yeah, you you know, you really hit that nail on the head. Yeah, Times says, when I was in Ireland, I didn't encounter any foods like that. Yeah, I believe it. 
yeah yeah there's no such thing as that in ireland it's just i don't these guys are just goofy and they were like well what are we going to call these potato chips with corned beef on them oh, yeah iris nachos <laughs> yes exactly. delicious bacon is best those that's the two-step process if you have hair in this family um it has to be red hair i, I don't make the rules is that why so did they make you shave your head mm -hmm. because of that well when i was little i had uh <laughs> when i was little i actually had reddish hair did you mm-hmm it has to be in there somewhere because it's recessive. When I when I was little, I had curly blonde hair. Figure that one out. What? Yeah. Incredible. Long curly blonde hair. All right. Hey, so they're looking for that. They want that something on that brighter side. I think that's the optimism we've heard so much about. So we're going with the sixteen. I think that's cool. I yep. really like and that. plenty of room. Honestly, I mean, we've done crazy stuff even in the holy crap, tears. Jack. You know about the Ruck? The Sorry. Ruck? Oh my God. So the Ruck is this bar in Troy. So I lived at Cahoes. Troy was right across the bridge. Um, the Ruck, my buddy owned, owned this place. Um, and you would go in, there were dollar cheeseburgers that were cooked at the bar. Um, and it's dollar it's, cheeseburgers? Yeah. And they had a fantastic beer selection. They had um, shuffleboard. I mean, th it, this place, and there was, it was no frills. It was all wood inside. And uh, the Ruck was one of my favorite places. Yeah, it sounds all right. Now, Synaptic Fire is mm -hmm. coming back uh, with, with potato chips as a, it, just incredulous. Um, the Irish nacho needs to be in a potato skin, apparently like they are at Shanahan's in Vancouver, Washington. I mean, I'm not mad at it. I Oh, that's interesting. I will literally, it, it won't surprise you to learn that I will eat literally any goddamn thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've, yeah, potato skins, yeah. Mm hmm. Sure. Mm hmm. Yeah. Okay, well, let's talk about our bitterness. Exactly. Um, typically between 10 and 20, because with this beer, the, oh, malt, yeah. the malt does the talking. It's supposed to be broth. Yeah. Right, I mean, it's it's supposed to it's going to be hearty you, down in that base. You, it's not you about want bitterness. the caramel taste. You, mm -hmm. you want all these malty flavors coming out. Yeah, so let's 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 go 10, 15, 20. Yep, because it, it could be even lower. Now, if it ends up being lower, um, I think it's incumbent upon us to um, to get to build a really interesting malt bill that can sit in the middle of that. Uh, that isn't going to uh, overpower the 10 too much. All right. IBU, the International Bitter Union. Unit. Unit. Well, yeah. I, yeah. No, I'm not going to fight you about that at all, Synaptic. I mean, it's just not that far well, away. I, I think the fantasy is that Josh gets the backpack, the Twitch backpack, and we just go on brewery tours. I Worst think, things I, have happened. Yeah. Worst things have happened, and I suspect that Josh would endure it. Yeah, you have to put up with us for a couple of days, but oh, he's he's had to do it before. Now, is another nine percent beer at lunchtime a good idea? Yes, there's no fucking, there's no no in that scenario. Look at that. Look at the head on that beer. I know. I know. That's from a growler from yesterday. Man, I, I, I wish what I is knew this? Mike would... I, I, I would have brought one of these to, for Mike. What is this nose? Oh, it's, 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 the, it's the cinnamon and maple. It's got to be, right? Uh-huh. Because there's, there's no bitterness at all in it there's nothing that you would associate like it doesn't smell like a beer at all it smells like a bakery right <laughs> ryan maybe synaptic um all right so really they want it okay yeah uh, they're they're building a good narrative here i think what are they? Uh, what's well, the, right uh, now they're pushing ten. Nope. Right. 
I think 10's a great... Uh... Well, absolutely. I mean, that's about as far south, I mean, except for like a Groot. I mean, I think that's as far south as we're, as we've even attempted, right? Yeah. Is it that, is it the roasted? What is that smell? It smells like something specific. But right back at you, Snatchik. No, it smells like something specific, like a like chocolate or cocoa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it actually smells like good chocolate, even though it shouldn't, right? Mm. Do, do, do you see what I mean? There's something up on top of it. That's I weird. May, I, I may have to get another just to try out. Your well, I mean, it's theory. it's incumbent. Um, it's incumbent upon you. So wishful drinking, it looks like the. It's, is it filling up or draining? Oh, it's filling back up. Filling back up. Yeah, look at that. Remember, we didn't have to put a lot of uh, grains into this beer. Mm -mm. So we, we've got a lot of room to play on top of that. Uh, grain yeah. Come here, Bennett. You're okay. Okay. Right. So let's talk about our base malts. One, yeah. I think we go with a classic pale UK malt. Mm -hmm. This is going to be clean and crisp. And, and then we're going to, if we, if we choose this malt, then we're going to expand out on flavors like dark sugars, caramels, things in that nature to really yeah, give, yeah. give the Here's our flavor. base and then we inflect it. Yes, right? exactly. Or... I, I kind of like the thought of a golden promise. This is going to be sweeter. In flavor. Oh, as opposed to the not not as crisp or dry. Mm -hmm. This this would be the oddball in this situation. This would be the yeah. It's not it's not really on model, mm -hmm. but we can make it happen. Yeah. It's but golden promise is also another UK um, uh, grain. There we go. We gotta we gotta reflect tell Ryan, we just use Maris Otter and you know we could go with it again, but I think we're we're better suited with a a, a true pail for this, or if we wanted to go in some opposite direction, it would be a golden promise. Mega sweet. Yeah. Yeah, I just can't stop smelling it. I I, mm -hmm. I think that I, I think it's a great beer, but That aroma is is probably is one of our crowning achievements. I yeah. literally don't get it. Yeah. And it, yeah, it, that's it, the it Christmas. Actually, that's the Christmas. The, angle aroma, there the too. aroma sets up the whole beer, right? No, it's true. Uh, yeah, I mean oats. Oats are obviously classic. I mean, we we support the the use of oats um, in beer. Oh, 100%. Um, it's just, it, it's going to be, ultimately, it's going to come down to what type, what type of a body we want in here. And so the oats, what, what oats would do in here is they would give us um, more of a, a soapy texture, like a more, a, a richer, more syrupy texture, which would go with the Golden Promise, let's say. Um, it would, they'd sort of be of a piece. Uh, Dow to Tech beer is, uh, uh, I would say, a sort of a founding document in baking. Mm. There's a, a lot of relationships between baking and beer and brewing. Um, there's a lot of pizza. The spent grains are used in uh, baking Everything. all the time. Baking, baking, pizza, um, I mean, anything. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There's still a lot there. After our process is done with it, there's plenty there. Okay, so we're gonna start out with the pale malt, which is on the simpler side. Okay. Which I think is which I think is good because remember we're we're trying to make we're trying to give you that clean break with the old year, right? So yep. clean is good. I think as a as a vibe, clean and crisp is good. Now, the second um, one we can we can choose because we want to make this 
we want to bring caramel into the flavor of this beer. Now we can go with a, a crystal 60, which is going to give us some head retention mm -hmm. and some caramel flavor, or we could go with a Cara aroma, which is a dark crystal malt and it's going to be extreme caramel flavors. Interesting. Yeah. We have not used Cara aroma yet. No. And we're just gonna put a little bit. How's it even spelled? Is it? It's. It's. Oh, it's. It's Cara Aroma. It's the two words just smashed together. Pretty much. Wouldn't that be nice? I mean, this actually sounds really good right now, probably yeah. because I've annihilated myself. I've impaled myself on last week's right devil. Now, what we would do if, if we didn't go with the, the real caramel flavor, the, the, the dark caramel flavor, the deep caramel flavor. Yeah. Um, with a crystal, we could add things like a roast um, or some or not really because you don't really want roasty flavors, but you, you want um darkened flavors you want um like yeah dark, caramel, like, dark sugars you want rich sugar yeah but but yeah in terms of like the bitterness you'd get from the darker grains or the roasted grains that doesn't feel quite right mm -hmm. given what they've told us so far with their with their votes right mm -hmm. You have you have ensorcelled them with this care aroma. <laughs> I don't know. I think your I think your words have uh, really driven it home. Well, and it's you know what this is the other thing is it is new. Yeah, which I think is I think is appropriate too. Like we're we're trying something new even here. Um, Magical Captain King Jerry, where do you stand on IPA? Is there? I love. Oh. Them. Yeah. I love them. I'm obsessed with them. That doesn't mean that that doesn't mean that um, they don't occasionally bite off more than they can chew or show their ass. But as a as a style and as a form, you're playing around with um, like that bitterness, especially just as an experience. There's a lot of ways to get there, and there's a lot of ways to use it. And so, um, I mean, the, uh, the biggest trend probably is this hazy thing that's big yeah that's true right and brute ipas happened but i don't think they they don't strike me they didn't really take over like hazies did there's a lot that can be said in a beer um on the bitterness side and ipa is typically the the tip of the spear on that so we could keep this so the next vote would be stay as is this is all we need yeah, 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 exactly. Let's get it. Um, another part of this, we could put in some flaked um, oats if we wanted to. Yeah, yeah. Because it, 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 most or, of the body or, is still crisp and clean. Either that or malted oats. One of the two. Either either or malted Ooh, oats. Let's do, let's do malted oats. Yeah, that, that's going to, you know, um, give some head retention, body, mouthfeel. Um, or we could do... Head retention is not a word. Not yet. I don't think so. Not yet. I could I could really use it a lot and see if I could push it. Or we could do a little bit of amber malt in here as well. Tell me more. Um, this is just going to give us, I mean, this is traditionally added to English um, beers. It's going to give us a little bit of a biscuity flavor. Interesting. Um, to, that might be nice on the, the caramel. Yeah. That might be a nice. That might be a nice thing to situate the rest of these flavors against, right? Mm -hmm. Sort totally. of backstop them a bit. But yeah. we're good as there, and the malted oats might be really good too. Yeah. Uh, Demetrius says that uh, oats are very on brand for Scots. That's true. Mm -hmm. Scottish oatmeal is serious business. It was funny. I mentioned it like a, a couple of days ago, I was finally cleaning out my closet mm -hmm. um, of all this crap. And then I realized I have way too many of two things, Tommy Bahama shirts 
and kilts. And I have no clue <laughs> You're why. You're trying to figure out the overlap like, there? I'm trying to figure out how they correlate. I get the kilts part because I'm Scottish, but I don't understand the Tommy Bahamas. So <laughs> they both feel great when you wear them. Let's just put it that way. Uh, yeah. Magical Captain King says, um, what about the ever escalating hop spore? I mean, that, yeah, those are the those are the excesses that I mean. You know, those stunts. I mean, the stunts like that happen in Scotch, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Um, in terms of peak content, right? Yep. That, that, that happens over there. And there's always going to be people who want to who want to sort of like seek that extreme. And I completely I completely understand it. I absolutely get it. Um, Graham, but, when we're, when we're yeah. back into the office, I will wear a Tommy Bahama and a kilt at the same time and blow Jeff's mind. Thomas Mick Bahama. Yeah, exactly. Mac Bahama. Yeah. Come here, booze. Oh, you're going to hear me referring to many different. Uh, you probably heard at least three different names for this dog. And, and oddly enough, the booze he's talking about is not the liquor. <laughs> no. So he is named after Mr. Bennett from Pride and Prejudice. But he's very, very rarely called that. <laughs> Generally speaking, he is either uh, Benny, Benny and Boo, right? Benny, Benny and the Jets has happened. Um, the Boozle, Das Boozle Hound. True. Like Bennett doesn't, Bennett is a rare occurrence here. Okay, yeah, it's malted oats for sure. Uh, that's going to be so fucking no, good. No, I think, I think it's really cool. And because the, the main bulk of the body is still that pale malt, it's mm -hmm. not going to throw us off too crazy. It's just gonna give it. Um, it's just gonna give it. It's just gonna make it a little chewy. Hit me up with our SRM. Um, the SRM. Oh no. Oh god. You done fucked it up, didn't you? No, they want sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah. Okay. And our ABV. Uh, ABV is four. I got that one. I didn't fuck that one up. Great. We're right there. Lovely. So there's your preview. Put uh, some so, some wool. Scary crazy. That's not what that's not on. That's not that's not appropriate. Yet yeah, vapor lock, that's what we do every Tuesday. We don't know how to not do it. All right. There, there, wait, there is a hop called Jester's? Oh, is there? God, I want to get... Listen to this. It's not yeah. for this beer. I want to find it. It's a UK hop that adds tropical fruit, black fruit, black currant, and lychee. Interesting. A lot of tart, a lot of interesting tart fruits. Yeah. Yeah, I've never heard of Jester. I'm not mad at it. Nope. All right, so what are we thinking? Uh, first one is, why is this? Yeah, there we go. Um, first one I'm putting right on the block is East Kent Goldings. Okay, which is classic. Classic. Um, so, so East Kent Goldings, that would be, um, let's keep what worked this year. Yes, exactly. Well, we could suffix. Interesting. If we can we find it, Sussex. It's similar to Fuggles, um, but yet it has a delicate flavor re retention. That's interesting. Is it? They're called Suffolk. Uh, no, Suff Sussex. Oh, Sussex. Like I don't know of Sussex. I've seen some. I've seen. <sighs> hmm. Sussex has as a, a subtle what? Um, it's good yet delicate flavor retention. Interesting. I've never heard that in a hop. 
Yeah. Um, I think uh, Challenger would be great. Fruity, there spicy. There we go. Fruity There's our spicy. optimism. Fruity and spicy. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, yeah, Brewer's Gold is kind of the same thing. Yeah, it's kind of in the mix already, I think. And this, and this, this is just our our um, ante here. Mm -hmm. It could it could be that we drop something in there at the end. I don't think. God, I don't think we need to. Not now. We, now we might we... not. I mean, I, I think I think this is I think this one is designed to. Um, this is essentially designed to be a a kind of potable friend. Mm -hmm. And so we don't want to get too into the weeds probably with it is my guess. Right. I can't stop smelling it. You know what it smells like? Awesome. No, I oh. finally figured it out. It smells like a Christmas orange. Ha! That's a good... That's a very distinct smell. Yes. That's it, yeah. right? That's pretty great. I like the smell as much as I like the taste. I, I can't, that's hard to believe. Yeah, I'm all for this. Uh, Synaptic, this is um, this is just Icewind Ale. It's out of this fucking world, dude. <laughs> oh, Cornelius, are, are you not familiar with the Christmas orange? Here, let me find one for you. No, there, there's obviously getting an orange for Christmas. That was already a thing. But I'm talking specifically about Terry's chocolate orange. Let me find one for you. It's like a, it comes in a little box. And it's like a, it's like an orange. You can break individual slices Here, of it. this chocolate off. I got it. I'll shoot it right? again. There you go. I just drop it in there. Yeah, a Terry's orange. Exactly right. Or, or, or maybe you're joking. No, that's the type of orange I'm talking about. Yeah, Pyro. Are they not Christmas related? I, I've only the only reason I know about them at all is because I've gotten them on. Like that would be like a stocking gift. Yeah. Is it Pyro? Are those? Do you just eat those all year? I mean, what I you, Ned. What do you mean, milk or dark chocolate? Are there, is there more than one kind? There's a milk chocolate one? Oh, yeah. Oh, there we go, oh, yeah. Marnie. Exactly right. Year round? What? White chocolate? Oh, no, they're super cool. The, the, no, the dark chocolate, I think that Brenna would probably love that. Um, but the, the regular one is, is pretty mild. It's just, a, it's just a good candy. It's something you want to eat. There's a white chocolate one? Hold the phone. Yeah, see that sounds okay. Yeah, I think here, I think that here maybe they're they're associated with this, uh, with the holiday. Oh yeah, mint chocolate. Yeah, for me. Uh, well, and for me, the the um, you know, as as a youth, as a youth, the um, the Tic Tac, the mint orange, like the orange mint Tic Tac. That was like my go-to candy. Oh yeah, absolutely. I love that shit. You have like seven at a time. Crash Test Gremlin says it's a good stocking stuffer, really Easter too. Oh yeah, of course, well, yeah. yeah. They sense. stay they stay moving these. Yeah, that makes sense. It's always the right time. Hey, so they, they're looking for that um that that Sussex, the new one. Okay, cool. So let's give it to him. Yeah, so caramely, so rich here in the middle, really mild. And we were going topping. for what for our IBUs? Ten. The IBU is ten. Yeah. Cool. Done. It's, it's we're we're imagining a sweeter year. All right, let's talk about some yeast. Yeasty. Ye mm -hmm. Yeasty. Um, let's see what we can find. I mean, Scottish ale is just going to be the number one right there. Yeah. This is the classic um, Scottish ale that we can use. So, what do they say Scottish ale does? My, my guess uh, is that it's gonna it's gonna emphasize um, malt. It's, it's yeah, it's 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 malt. It's gonna just emphasize the malt characteristics and the caramel in there. 
Um, actually, this is kind of another interesting one. Yeah. Um, the West Yorkshire Ale um, uh, uh, produces an ale with a, fr a full chewy malt flavor and Ooh. character, but finishes dry and balanced. Moderately nutty with some fruit and stone esters. That's kind of our, we're going to just jump a little bit out of the box. Yes, that's a little wild one, right? So the Scottish ale is like, hey, malt, what's going on? Mm -hmm. We remember you. And then the Yorkshire ale uh, gives it, it sounds like a texture. Yeah. Um, in a dish, but then it finishes dry mm -hmm. with some fruit um, tastes. Yeah. Those are both winners. I feel like those are both really cool. I mean, one of the, the, obviously, one of them is a little bit more classic. Yeah, absolutely. But, it, but each of them is down to clown. Yeah, I, 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 we, we don't lose on either of these votes. Now, what's the rest of that Sussex hop flavor profile? Can you pull that up? I'm, I'm super curious about it now because it's, it's a new. Actually, let's. Uh... Oh, it's an award winning dwarf hop variety. Sucks. Yeah, it has an earthy, grassy, and minty flavor. Oh, boy. It adds aroma rather than bit bitterness. That's wow. kind of neat. That's it's whacked out. Yeah, so it's, it's, some, it, it's some mutation. Mm -hmm. Flavor retention. Again, I've never heard of that. Sublime citrus notes, but does oh, not dominate, but does not dominate and provides a zesty balance within a blonde beer. That's kind of neat. Dude, this especially, is going to be... Especially as we talk about those orange, uh, the Christmas oranges, right? Exactly. So it's got the citrus and then it rests. Mm -hmm. I'm loving it. Um, yeah, and the truth is we can't really lose here in the chat. Maybe I'll even vote. <laughs> oh! Wait, can I do that too? Uh, clues, clues is like, Jerry. <laughs> Wait a minute. What of a bitch, I can vote too. I didn't know I could do yeah, so Yeah, I know. Long. I know. This is, it's life changing. So we can fuck with Josh now? Yeah. There's, and there's two of us. There's two of us and one of Josh. The game is afoot. Yeah. You know what? I think things are going to turn out okay. And that's not just because I've, I'm, you know, a glass and a half into this 9% beast. <laughs> this potable rhinoceros. I am, I am so thrilled about this. I, I wish I knew uh, Mike was cool with, I mean, dropping off beer. I would have. Well, no, got it, it, it just occurred to him today. Yeah. It's, it's brand new. Yeah. Cause I like, this is such a 50, 50 Mike. Like it could go either direction. <laughs> Yeah, this one, this one here. I think I think what we're putting together here, honestly, but he likes the he he prefers the crisp. Yeah. He likes the crisp dry. I think Alding, I think Alding Stein would be really good too. Mm -hmm. Um ABV Club is gonna be next week's um beer as well. Oh, we'll get so, it dialed in. Oh man. Oh. The um the is it the ice beer? Mm hmm we're gonna I guess how are you gonna do that? How are you gonna how are you gonna get that much? It may not be possible, right? It's called the fridge, and it's called I'm sad. Is it's it called sadness? It's called, it's called what I'm. It's called. It's called uh, tears. An act of aggression against the art and science of brewing. A hateful display. Uh, they want the Scottish ale, my friend John Blee. Thanks so much. Yeah, so the tales from the loop beer is the ABV Club, yep. and that's going to be uh, next week. But we have a Gabir Motors one coming up uh, later than that, right? Do we? I'm pretty sure. Maybe, maybe that was. Oh the yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! No, was dude. that the ice beer? No, that was the that was the. Um, hold on, let me get. Let me go through the list. Yeah. It was. This is gonna take a little bit. It's called Walk It Off. Oh yeah, that's the Kolsch. Yeah. Uh, maybe I'm thinking of something else. This was a double IPA. Oh no! Woof. Oh, walk it off is the no walk it off is the health potion. 
Oh, yeah. What the hell was the Gabir Motors one? We'll find it. Cold, cold tires. Cold tires. Yeah. There we go. And then the ABV Club, that's the mean one. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Classic flavors. All right. So we have got... I think a very, very good thing going here. We have our yeast, we have all of it. And then, I mean, theoretically, I think that it also had a name so, already. Some would give it a name. Yeah. Oh right? yeah, we don't even have to name this. No, no, because the whole purpose is to honor uh, our boy Taup, um, who has made the trek over to PAX shows. I have met him several times. And each time he comes over, he brings this, strange Scottish fudge that he gets from some kind of a fisherman. I mean, it sounds ridiculous. It sounds like I'd be making it up, but apparently there is a fisherman um, who knows this, the secrets of Scottish fudge and it doesn't really look like fudge. It's basically no. like, it's almost like, it's like shortbread without the flour. It's the greatest thing on this planet. I right? I freaking love a it. A tablet. I, th I think that might actually be it, Pyrrhal. Maybe he calls it fudge. Maybe he calls it fudge um, so that we'll understand what he means. Because <laughs> yeah, we have no. that sort of thing here, right? Yeah. It's like like a, like a blondie, which is basically like a, a cookie-based mm -hmm. brownie, right? But no, it's not fudge in the classic sense. It's <laughs> yes, Pyrrhal. It is definitely pure sugar. It'd be great to throw a few chunks of that into the boil. Probably do it. Probably do it safely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, this is essentially this is very crumbly, um, and he's pushing it on you twenty four seven. It is probably not a hundred percent good for you. No, but I don't care one no. else no. i want to eat every single piece i can no it's exquisite it's amazing no we did it well hey listen it seems Look like at that it seems like we might have uh, achieved uh achieved our aim in record time this is amazing this beer is going to be fantastic here on the program well here let me i'm going to send uh wait oh, oh god we get to send it to mike now and be like you ready yeah, exactly. I'm well, going to send it together. I'm, I'm going to send him a text right now. Mike. <laughs> Here we go. You ready? Question mark. Yeah. Exclamation point. Question mark. I love you. Period. Yeah, it's like, but there's there's no universe in which in my mind I was like I'll say you ready to say we're waiting and it's like yeah. I'm not even gonna attempt that. All right, we'll be out. <laughs> All right, well, wow, uh, that was fantastic. Precious chat, thank you so much. Uh, in what must certainly be considered a uh, a profound success on multiple axes, Icewind Ale working it. Mm -hmm. ABV Club on tap for next week. Uh, please come join us next Tuesday at noon for now. Uh, obviously, we're going to send it over to uh, my good friend, Mike Rahulik, and myself. We're going to check out this uh, Immortals Phoenix Rising. It seemed like, I mean, at first, I think it was mostly about sort of its influences, but yeah. Mike has reached a point now where it, it seems like they're starting to uh, manifest. Oh, some really? Cool stuff. Yeah. Well, it, it, Catch some of the stream. Like the stuff that he's been showing me makes no sense. Like mm. it's, there is actually some really special stuff in there. Uh, mm. But hey, until next time, we'll see you. Yeah. See you.